Hey everyone, hoping that you're having a great Tuesday. I'm um, sorry I can't be there with you guys, I miss you guys. Um, but let's take a look at some of the even and odd function stuff. I had a, an, a couple of emails last night that said, hey, you know, this even and odd function stuff, it's hard. And you know what? You're right, it's hard. Um, the, the proving of these things is one of the more challenging things, I think, in this chapter. The transformations, I mean, once you get them down, you try a few of them, it's not so bad. But uh, the even and odd proving stuff, it's, it's just a little counterintuitive. So let's take a look at this step by step. I'll, I'll try to approach it a little bit differently. Um, first, let's look at it graphically, and then we'll look at it uh, from the plugging in the negative x side of things. So graphically, not that bad. Even means that you have y-axis symmetry. Odd means that you have origin symmetry. That's the pinwheel symmetry where you can spin it around the graph 180 degrees around the origin. It's back on itself. So let's take a look at uh, making a table here of x squared and x cubed. So let's do um, if f of x is x squared. So we have x and then we have f of x, which is x squared. f of x equals x squared. And let's try it with values from negative 3 to 3. So, uh, I don't think negative 3 will work. We'll have to do negative 2. So, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So, if we square negative 2, we get 4. Square negative 1, we get 1. Square 0, we get 0. 1 squared is 1. And 2 squared is 4. So, I'm going to graph this. And we, we know what this looks like. So, we have 1, 1 is right here. Scale's a little weird on this. Negative 1, 1. 0, 0 is right there. And then we have 2, 4. And we have negative 2, 4. So we have a parabola that looks something like this. There's our parabola. And we see immediately, yeah, we have y-axis symmetry. Our axis of symmetry is right through the origin. We definitely have y-axis symmetry. This is an even function for sure. So graphing these things, easy to see what's going on. But let's take a look at what's happening here. When I plug in negative 2, and I plug in positive 2, what do you notice about the y-coordinates? Negative 2 and positive 2, the y-coordinates are the same. Negative 1 and positive 1, same deal. Same y-coordinate. So the whole idea here is if I plug in negative x and I plug in positive x, I'm going to get the same thing. I get x squared no matter what I do. Okay? So it's the y-coordinate. And x squared is my function. That's what f of x is. So when I plug in x or negative x, either one of them, it's going to give me the function, f of x. So even function graphically, not that hard to see. Looking at it from a table, when we plug in the opposite and the regular, both of them are going to give me the exact same thing. Okay, So negative x and positive x both give me x squared. Let's try it with x cubed. So we have x, and we have f of x, which is x cubed. So let's do the same numbers. We'll do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Don't know if we'll be able to get up because it doesn't go up to 8, but that's okay. So negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. So let's plot those points. Negative 2, negative 8. It's going to be like down here somewhere. Uh, negative 1, negative 1 is right here. 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 2, 8 will be up here somewhere. So it comes up like this. And then ends up there. Okay, so there is our cubic function. And this time, check it out. I plug in negative 2, I get negative 8. Plug in positive 2, I get positive 8. So they're kind of the same, right? How are they different? There's a negative in front of one of them. There's a negative in front of one of them. Negative 1 and 1 give me real similar answers, but one of them has a negative in front. So this time, if I plug in negative x and I plug in positive x, they're going to give me opposites. x gives me x cubed. Negative x is going to give me negative x cubed, which is the opposite of the function. That's negative f of x. This guy gives me f of x. Right? You plug in x no matter what it is, you cube it. So you can see that graphically by checking here. You plug in positive 2, you get positive 8. Plug in negative 2, you get negative 8. Okay? They're not the same value like we had over here. Right, with an even function, you plug in the opposite and the regular, and they end up the same place. Here they end up the same distance from zero, but they're opposite sides. So when I plug in positive x or I plug in negative x, they're going to give me opposites. So negative x ends up giving me negative f of x. And that's how we test. To test if we have an even function, we plug negative x into the function, and the question is, do we get the function back out? To get an odd, we plug in negative x, and we check, do we get the uh, opposite of the original function out, negative f of x. And that's why yesterday you saw me writing out a negative f of x and the f of x to see when I plug in that negative x, which one do I get? Do I get either one? 
if I get neither of them, then I have a neither this kind of situation. Right? But in this case, we have this x cubed, odd function, x squared, even function, because of the symmetry, and we see when we plug in the opposite of x, here we get the original function back, here we get the opposite of the original function. So let's try proving those analytically. <clears throat> so, um, oh, I already did that. So let's try pr proving it by plugging in negative x. So if f of x is x squared, to prove that it's even, odd, or neither, we plug in negative x. Now, my goal is either to get the original function, x squared, so this is our goal, or to get the opposite of the original function, which would be negative x squared. So if I get one of those two, it's going to be even or odd. If I get neither of those two, it's going to be neither. So we plug in f of negative x. That is negative x squared. When I square a negative number, it becomes positive, so it's just x squared. That is f of x. So I plugged in negative x, got f of x out, therefore, that's a little uh, proving method, therefore, that's three dots, therefore, f of x is even. That's what I just showed. I plugged in negative x, I got the f of x out, which means that negative x and x both map to the same value. I don't care what the function looks like, they both go to the same value. Let's try it with an x cubed. f of x is x cubed, x cubed, not negative x cubed negative f of x would be the opposite of x cubed, so that's my goal, is to get one of those. If I get the top one, it's an even function, bottom one, it's an odd function. So let's plug in f of negative x. That is negative x quantity cubed, which, well, when you cube a negative number, it preserves the negative, so that's negative x cubed, like negative 2 cubed is negative 8. That is the opposite of the original function, so we have an odd. Did not give us back the original function, it gave us the opposite. Up here, we got the original. Okay, and the reason they're even and odd is because we see these exponents. Hey, that's an even exponent, that's an odd one. The odd preserves the negative, the even does not, which is why they call them odd and even functions. So, got three bell work problems here for you. Why don't you give them a shot? So, each one of these, you're going to plug in f of negative x. I encourage you not to graph them. If you need to graph them, take a look at, uh, at your calculator, and you can throw them in the, the graph and see what you get for symmetry. But I would just plug in f of negative x into each x in here, put negative x instead, and see if you get the opposite of the original function out. So give that a shot and come back to me in a, in a minute or two. All right. Hope that uh, you were able to get one or two of these. We're going to try these by plugging in f of negative x prove whether they're even, odd, or neither, and then we're going to take a look at a graph of each one. So I'm going to do them one at a time. So first thing we have here is f of x is 3 over x to the fifth minus 2x cubed plus 9x. So looking at all these powers, they're all odd. So we might have an odd function. Let's see what happens. So first of all, f of x is 3 over x to the fifth minus 2x cubed plus 9x. So I might get that out when I plug in negative x. That would mean it was an even function. The opposite of f of x is negative... 3 over x to the fifth minus 2x cubed plus 9x. Okay, we can distribute that negative to the top or to the bottom. You get to choose one or the other, and uh, we'll see if that's going to be necessary at the end. So f of negative x is going to be 3 over negative x to the fifth. So I'm pl replacing x with negative x minus 2 negative x cubed plus 9 negative x. So let's see what we got. The fifth power preserves the negative, so I have 3 over negative x to the fifth, plus, because that, three, that third power is preserving the negative as well, so we have plus 2x, and then we have minus 9x. Now, immediately, it doesn't look like either one of these, but watch what happens if I pull out a negative sign. So I have 3 over negative times x to the fifth, minus 2x plus 9. Is it supposed to be 9? 9x? What did I do? Uh, that's x cubed. That's my problem. There we go. Okay, so I pulled out that negative, and now look, we have negative, positive, and that negative's up front. So that's negative 3 over x to the fifth minus 2x cubed plus 9, which is the opposite of f of x, there where we have an odd function. Let's take a look at the graph and see what's going on with this one and see if it looks like we have symmetry. Uh, get out. So, let's take a look at Desmos here. I was disappointed by this graph. I was hoping it would be more exciting. But we do see, if you rotate it around the origin, we have that origin symmetry. It is an odd function. Now, if you start playing with this a little bit, you get a lot more interesting functions. Look at that. So, this one also odd. 
right? Because if you reflected this down to the bottom, if you rotated around the origin, you would definitely have that graph mapped onto itself. You want 180 degrees around the origin. Kind of cool. All right, let's try another one. So in this case, once again, even, odd, or neither. So we do that by plugging in f of negative x. I always change my color when I leave the PowerPoint. I don't like that. So f of negative x, 2 times negative x to the fifth plus 5 times negative x cubed minus 4 times negative x plus 1. So the negative is going to preserve this guy here. So we have negative 2x to the fifth. Then we'll have, gosh, is that a 5? I think it is. <laughs> okay, then we have um, minus 5x cubed. And then we have plus 4x, and then we have plus 1. Now, something to notice here is the opposite of the function here. The opposite of the function would be negative 2x to the fifth minus 5x cubed, so far so good, plus 4x, and then it would be minus 1. Well, we don't have that. The 1 did not change. The 1 did not change. So in this case, we have one that's neither. Cool. All right, moving on. So, got another one here, even, odd, or neither. So we're going to plug in f of negative x, which is 4 times negative x cubed in absolute value. Negative x cubed is going to preserve that negative sign, so that's absolute 4 times negative x cubed. Now those absolute value bars, they are going to take this negative that we preserved, and it's going to turn it positive. So whether it's negative or positive to begin with, it's going to make it positive. So we have 4x cubed in absolute value. Hey, that's our original function. That means it's even. Let's take a look at it. There is our absolute 4x cubed. And we see that we have a nice little kind of parabola looking thing. And that is indeed an even function. We skipped over this one. Uh, this was one that was neither, right? It doesn't go through the origin, so we don't have origin symmetry. And it also doesn't have y-axis symmetry, because this hump would match over to the other side. It would not work out. Cool. All right, hopefully you feel a little bit better about even and odd functions and how to prove them. Make sure you do that sheet in the yellow packet that has the six problems on it. That's really good. The solutions are online, and uh, you're going to want to know those for sure for the quizzes and tests coming up. All right, let's talk about the graph scale change theorem today. So earlier in the chapter, we had the graph translation theorem, and now we're extending it to the scale change theorem where we're going to be stretching, shrinking, um, and multiplying graphs by things. We're going to see what's going to happen. So we're going to start by looking at a scale change and see what happens to it. So we're taking the graph y equals x squared. We're going to compare it to y equals 2x squared and y equals 1 half x squared, and we're going to see what's going to happen. So let's start by making a table. We got x, we got x squared, and then let's just start with that. So let's run our x values from uh, negative 2 to 2. So we go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We square those, and we get negative 2 squared is 4. That gives us a 1, a 0, a 1, and a 4. So let's plot those. So we got negative 2, 4 right there. We got negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. So if we graph that parabola, it looks something like this. There's our parabola. So now let's see what happens if we do 2x squared. Think about what you think that's going to look like. So if we multiply all the values by 2, what's that going to look like? Well, let's see here. Negative 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. So all I'm really doing here is multiplying the second column by 2, right? Because negative 1 squared is 1. Now I multiply by 2, it's 2. 0 times 2 is still 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. So I'm going to do this in a different color. Probably should have changed the color for the table, too. Let's do it in blue. I'm just going to erase these and do them again. Why not? It was pretty easy. 8, 2, 0, 2, 8. So we're at negative 2 up at 8 now. It's up here. Then at negative 1, we're at 2. 0, we're still at 0. 1, we're at 2. And then at 2, we're at 8. So what happened to that parabola? I hear a few things, usually. Sometimes I hear that that parabola got skinnier. Well, yeah, I believe that, right? It kind of looks like it went in. Some people say, though, that it got taller. And look at this. We took 4, multiplied it by 2, that brought us to 8. 
1 times 2 gave us 2, 1 times 2 gave us 2, and um, 4 times 2 also over here gave us 8. This is what's called a vertical stretch. Vertical stretch. It's called vertical because what we did was we took all of the y values that had already been x squared, so we took the y values and we multiplied them by 2. So it stretched it upwards. Let's look at what happens with uh, 1 half x squared. Uh, green, why not? So now we're going to look at 1 half x squared. So we take our x, we square it, then divide it by 2. So we square the x is 4, divided by 2 is 2. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. 0, 1 half again, and then we're back to 2. So if we graph that, we've got a negative 2, 2. It's right here. And then we've got uh, negative 1, 1 half. It's right there. 0, 0, 1, 1 half, and then 2, 2. So this time, instead of getting skinnier or getting taller, we got shorter. So we kind of got squashed down. All of our red values were divided by 2 in order to get that green graph. So we divided all of our uh, y values by 2, which gave us the green graph. So what if we have a negative in front of there? That 4 thirds, so we see what's happening here. If it's 1, it just stays by itself, right? 1x squared is just x squared. If we have 2x squared, that's where it kind of grew vertically. And then if we had a fraction, it kind of shrunk. Negative 4 thirds, well, 4 thirds is bigger than 1, so it's going to be like a stretch. That negative, that negative, if we think uh, back to what reflections do, that negative is going to flip it over to the bottom. So it's going to be a stretch. It's going to kind of go like that. Tough to fit on there. But she was only, uh, let's see. Yeah, that function, uh, negative 4 thirds x squared, flipped over the y-axis, and it's going to be a vertical stretch. And that's it. So let's try one with uh, something inside with the x. So last time when we were doing graph translation, we saw things that were with the x did the opposite of what we wanted them to do. We'll see if the same thing happens today. So let's change our color again. Let's go back to blue. So we've got our x. We've got our absolute x. Let's start there. So absolute values, I'm going to use our negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, and 6. Absolute just makes them positive. 6, 3, 0, 3, 6. So negative 6, we're up at 6. Uh, negative 3, we're up at 3. 0, 0, 3, 3, and 6, 6. So we've got our V-shaped graph there, our absolute value. So any guesses, based on what happened last time, we multiplied by numbers, what's going to happen with these things? Think about it. 3x and x over 3. All right, let's give it a shot and see what happens here. So I'm going to make a separate table, actually. I'm going to do x. I'm going to do different x values. I should use a different color. Let's try. What am I going to use today? I don't think I've used that red. So we got x, and we got absolute 3x. So the uh, x values I'm going to use this time, if I use the same x values as the last time, I would have to multiply them by 3. We'd be way, way um, uh, tall. We'd be too tall if we plug in the x values and multiply them by 3 to get y. So let's try negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Negative 2 times 3 gives me negative 6. Absolute gives me 6. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. It's a 3. We get 0. 1 times 3 is 3. We get 3 again. And 2 times 3 is 6. Absolute is 6. Let's we'll check that out. So this time we have the same y coordinates, but we had to change our x coordinates. So we go to negative 2. Now we're up to 6. And then we go to negative 1. We're up to 3. 0, we're at 0. 1, we're at 3. And 2, we're at 6. So check it out. What happened here, because we changed the x's, we actually came in like that. That's kind of cool. We divided all of our x-coordinates by 3, and then came in towards the center. So this is one where it kind of does the opposite of what you're thinking. That 3x does the opposite. It actually shrunk us into a third. Now, why does that happen? Well, because now, in order to get a number to behave like negative 6, I have to go much closer in, because we're going to multiply it first before that y value gets assessed. So we have to be able to see the 3x there and see, OK, that's actually a horizontal shrink. Cool. Let's think about the x over 3. Let's use another color. Purple. 
So if we have x, and then we have absolute x over 3. Okay, so let's try these values. Negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, 6. This time we're dividing by 3 first, so negative 6 divided by 3 is 2. Absolute is 2. That's going to give us a 1, a 0, a 1, and a 2. Ooh. So now we're dealing with numbers that are still out here, but we have lower values when we're done. So we got a 2 there, we got a 1 here, and then 0, 0. And then we have 3, 1, and we have 6, 2. So what happened this time? Everyone always says it flattened. What actually happened is we went out. All of those x values actually got widened, which is kind of cool. So 3x actually was a shrink horizontally. And x over 3, that was actually a, uh, a stretch horizontally. All right, so let's talk through this. What if we have like y equals the square root of uh, y equals the square root of negative two x? So if we have the square root of negative two x, then um, when we think about our domain, like if you try to plug in like one, nope, square root of negative two, can't do it. Try to plug in like four, nope, square root of negative two, can't do it. Uh, so we have negative values if we plug in positive values for x. Let's try plugging in negative values for x. What if we do like negative two for x? Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Hey, that gives us out a positive 2. What if we try, like, negative 8? Well, do we have that? We don't have that. Um, so, let's see. We're kind of low on possibilities here. Um, we could do, like, negative 4.5. Negative 4.5 times negative 2 is positive 9. That would give us a 3. Um, but the point is, only negative values are going to work here because we're multiplying by a negative number. We could do 0. 0 would give us um, 0. So we have negative 2, 2. Mm -hmm. And then we have negative 4.5, 3, right there. So it looks like a square root function that's going over to the left instead of the right. And that's what that negative does right there. That negative in front of something on the inside is going to give you a reflection over the y-axis. So let's see what's actually happening here. This 2 on the inside actually ended up shrinking us in by a half, because we'd be out at 4 here. So it shrunk us in horizontally. And when we saw something like before on the absolute graph that was x over 3, it actually ended up stretching us, which was kind of counterintuitive to what you would think. So let's see what's going on here. Before we had the translation notation, x, y, and that told us what was actually happening to the graph. We have something for size changes, too, or for scale changes. So the actual thing that's happening, this time we're going to use an S. The scale change map is x, y, 2, and then instead of writing x plus 2, x minus 2, something like that, ax, comma, by. So we're multiplying all of our coordinates by something this time. So instead of doing x plus 3 all over the place, uh, we are now going to have like 3x. Okay. So, um, for example, uh, if you had a scale change that took x, y, and let's say that it took it to 2x, uh, 1 third y. Now this is what's actually happening. Actual. So that means that you would be uh, doing a horizontal stretch. Horizontal stretch by 2. And that would say then the vertical factor. Vertical factor is 2. And then we would be doing a vertical shrink. So a vertical shrink because we have that one third y. So our whoop, oh gosh, that's the horizontal factor, Fransky. Horizontal factor is two, and now our vertical factor is one third. Cool. Okay. So uh, if a and b are the same, if a equals b, that's called a size change. Doesn't happen that often. Usually only when uh, um, you're dealing with like a parabola and you just want to make it bigger. So you want to make it bigger both on the x and on the y. So if that happens, you end up with just kind of a massive parabola. Size change. All right, let's take a look at the scale change theorem. 
So just like with um, the translation theorem, they're both opposite. So a scale change, x, y maps to a, x, b, y, is the same, or is achieved even, is the same as replacing x with x over a, and y with y over b in the equation. OK. So x can be replaced with x over a, y is replaced with y over b. So um, just like kind of our translations, it's not ax that goes in, it's x over a, it's the opposite. So for example, if we have f of x equals x squared, and we want, we want a horizontal shrink by 2. And we want a vertical stretch by 3. Yeah. So our goal here is to get the s and to get an equation. Let's call it g of x. Well, I'll do f of x again. That's OK. OK. So where are we actually going? Well, we're shrinking horizontally by 2, so it'll be half x. And then we're stretching 3, so it'll be 3y. That's what's actually happening on the graph. Every point. If you give me the point 4, 7, I can tell you that's going to go to 2, 21. That's where it's going to go because we're multiplying everything by 1 half and 3. So what graph scale change theorem says is I'm going to replace the x in my equation. So instead of writing y equals x squared, it's going to become, instead of writing y, I write y over 3. And instead of writing x, I could write um, x over 1 half. So I could do x over 1 half squared. But x over 1 half, that's just 2x. So I have y over 3 equals quantity 2x squared. Now, we usually see this solve for y, so we have y equals 3 times 2x quantity squared. That's it. So we're going to do another example here with a function that is not a parent function, but we have all of the points here. So this is kind of saying, well, if we know what the scale change is, we can find where all these points are going to end up. So we have the graph and table, and they tell us what the graph, what, what they want us to draw. y over 3 equals f of 2x. So here what's happened is y has been replaced, y has been replaced by y over 3, and x has been replaced. We have no idea what this function actually is. It looks like a piecewise kind of thing, but it's been replaced by 2x. So because we know what the equation has been replaced by, we can get our scale change. So it looks like xy has gone to half x, or x over 2. And then the y values have gone to uh, 3y. So we're going to take every point here, x comma y, and we're going to change it. Okay. So now we're going to have x over 2, and we're going to have 3y. So let's see what's going on. So x over 2 I'm going to do with all of these guys. So negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 over 2 is negative 1.5, let's say. Uh, 0 over 2 is 0 still, 2 over 2 is 1, and 6 over 2 is 3. So my 3y, well, it looks like I have 6, negative 3, negative 3, uh, 9, and 0. So let's talk for a second about what's happening here, right? Our scale change, it looks like we should have shrunk horizontally by a factor of 2 and stretched vertically by a factor of 3. So let's graph it and see what happens. Negative 3, 6 is right here. Uh, 1.5, negative 3, negative 1.5, excuse me, negative 3 is right down here. So it looks like this line has kind of been transformed to this spot right here. Interesting. Um, 0, negative 3 is right there. And 1, 9 is going to be up here somewhere. And then 3, 6. All right, so let's connect those lines. There we are, there we are. There we are, and there we are. So what happened here is, yes, we did indeed shrink horizontally by a factor of half, and then we stretched vertically by a factor of three. Very cool. 
So believe it or not, that's actually all I have for you today. Um, you can work on the yellow worksheet uh, packet, in, uh, worksheet 3.5a. Tomorrow you're going to have some more worksheets that are going to kind of drill and kill the idea of um, these scale changes, and you'll come out of it uh, hopefully being able to do these things inside out and in your sleep. Speaking of sleep, it is time for me to go to bed. So good night. I love you guys. That's why I'm here. Have a great day, and I will see you on Thursday. Bye-bye.